Right. Well, this is the start of maybe three or four short vlogs from a trip uh, that's been it's been really good. Uh, it's my first experience of a camper van, <clears throat> and I thought, what can I do? I've got I've got the camper van for about a week, so what can I do? So for the first four or five days, I decided that I was going to go and bag some corbets. Sometimes I'm in the mood for bagging. A lot of the time I'm not, but. Yeah, a few weeks ago when I, when I went, went on this trip, I was in the mood for bagging some new corbets. And I just thought, let's go to an area where there's a few, I don't know how many I've got left to do, maybe 30, 20 or, I don't, I don't know, 20 or 30. But anyway, I need to get some done, so I thought I'll go to uh, Moidart, Ardgower and uh, Sunart and try and do some corbets there. And the weather wasn't looking great, so it was ideal for the camper van, to be honest with you, and, and ideal for for bagging some corbets. It would have been nice. If it had been perfect weather, I probably would have gone up to Ascent or Torridon or one of these places. But anyway, it wasn't nice weather and the first day was looking the best out of the four that was away. So I decided to do the longest day, which was about 1,300, 1,400 metres of ascent. It was quite a long day, but I thought I need to get these corbets done. You know, once you, once you get them done, that's it, you know. You know, get a bit, a bit of a bagging bug. And with that in mind, if you do anything, just watch the end of this video. And uh, if, if it's maybe just me, but uh, let me know if you've experienced what I've experienced. But th th you have to wait until the end to find out th what that is. Anyway, let's cut to the chase. Let's get to the film and uh, you'll see me getting ready to head out in the camper van and head up to Moidart. Hope you enjoy it. Eagle-eyed amongst you might realise I'm in a different vehicle today and I've, uh, I've got eight days ahead of me uh, in the camper van for the first time ever. I've never been in a camper van before so I'm really looking forward to this. And of course when you hatch these plans, the weather's sunny, the sky's blue and it's come to now and I can't really change, <laughs> I can't really change the weather and it's horrendous. And I think the forecast for the week ahead isn't too great, but you know what? In Scotland, if you only went out when it was blue skies, you wouldn't get much walking or hiking done. You wouldn't get through the Monroes and Corbett's and what have you. So I'm not going to be doing any Monroes, but I am going to be going to an area where I have got quite a few Corbett's still left to do. And it's relatively unknown to me. I have been to it a few times before, but I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how I get on in this camper van because I've always wanted one and I'm kind of saving up for one. And hopefully by the end of this uh, this wee trip, I'll still want to, to have one. It's quite a good idea to hire, to hire one out and, and live in it for uh, a good few days just to see what the experience is like. So anyway, onwards into the rain. Ah, fingers crossed it, it, it brightens up. Well, it didn't show any signs of drying up on the, the long drive up to Moidart. And it was just chucking it down, going up the A9 and across towards the area. But I was really looking forward to trying to get some new Corbett's done. This week was going to be all about bagging new Corbett's and getting through that list. That's me just stopped at the, uh, well, the start of the walk. I've got a wee bit of a road walk to go, but this is great already. I've, um, <laughs> as you can see, I've got the kettle on. I'm going to have my lunch here because it's quite late in the day. It's about two o'clock. And the reason I came a bit later is there's a, the weather forecast was shocking for today. It's been peeing it down all the way up, quite heavy rain. But later in the day, that rain's meant to move through. And it does show signs that I might have got it right for a change. I don't think it's going to be great sunny weather, but certainly later in the day, it was to be fine. So I've stopped here. And no rush, as I say, I'm going to have a coffee with my lunch and just uh, get ready in the van. I'm loving it already. After having some coffee and lunch in the van, I set about getting my gear ready and I was soon leaving the van. In my t-shirt, it was actually dry by now and things were, weren't looking too bad. And the first, first thing you have to negotiate is a locked gate. So over that and across the railway line and I was off on my way up the hill. It was quite a late start, it was probably about 2.33 by this time, but I was kind of hoping that was going to work in my favour and that the sun was going to come out. That's we started, and I think I've actually timed it quite well for the change. As I said, the forecast was pretty wrong today, and I was going to do this, this loop in the reverse direction to what I'm doing it, thinking that the, uh, 
the views would open up on the way back but as you can see behind me there's actually speckles of sunshine now so I thought I'd just come up, up the way straight from the car and then I can do the road walk at the, uh, the end of the day and basically I'm going up behind me there's a gorge the path follows the kind of western end of the gorge and once I get to the top of that I'm on the ridge up to the first hill which is called Bennu or Moor but that's not the Corbett, the Corbett's actually Bennu or Beg which is a bit confusing because Moor means big Beg means smaller than big <laughs> anyway Beg usually means smaller but that doesn't always mean height, that sometimes means size of hills if, if you look at Anik Moor and Anik Beg for instance, so heading up there first and then down, big drop down because it's Corbett's and back up the, the second one, which I can't remember the name of, but I will find out. I'm making my way up the hill now. I must be come, come behind this wee crag here to get some shelter because there's a stiff breeze blowing around. You can see behind me. Still brightness over there, back over Glen Finnan. But where I'm going is up there into that greyness. I don't know if you can see it behind me. So I think my plan's failed. <laughs> Chances of getting views up there at this precise moment in time, zero. But you never know, it might just be a passing shower. <laughs> Forever the optimist. It's the uh, second day, the second or third of June today. Anyway, start of the summer. And I think it's just to get colder as the week gets on. <laughs> this is as good as it's going to get. But you know what, I'm not going to complain because it's... It's nice just to be out in the fresh air, getting some exercise, and for a change I'll be in a nice hot warm van instead of a tent beating off the midges tonight, so looking forward to relative luxury later on. Anyway, I need to get cracked on into this clag, and maybe get my waterproofs on. <laughs> Let's see how we go. I managed to get a wee bit further up the hill before I had to stop. The rain had started and it was starting to get heavier and heavier. You can't really see it on the video but it was enough to stop me in my tracks and get the old hard shell on and make myself waterproof which made all the difference as I was about to head into the cloud and the clag. Not something I was really relishing to be honest with you but it was another two corbets. Well, as you can see I'm well and truly in the mist now. I'm going up there somewhere to the, the first top, it's, although I'm only doing two corbets it's, uh, it's three hills I'm going up, the first one Benuar Moor and I drop down and then up to Benuar Beg, which is, or Veg is the, uh, is the corbet and then way right down and up to the, the third and second corbet but what I've been doing on the way, <laughs> the way down, or sorry the way up has been looking at my way down, now you can't see it now because that sods low, the clags coming literally five minutes ago this was all clear and I was just making sure I could look at the landscape, look at my map, and I was actually just seeing my way off the hill. I think that's sometimes good practice if you get the view, just to just to see where you're going, to see what it's like. There's a few few burns down there that are, that are nice and white, indicating there's going to be some interesting uh, burn crossings <laughs> later on. But I always think that's a good thing to do. Anyway, I'm really not holding out much hope for for getting these views. You're going to get fantastic views up here down down towards Glen Finnan and down the loch and what have you, but we'll be doing extremely well if we can see anything further than uh, 100 metres I think. As you can see it's pretty claggy. Right, let's get up here. <laughs> summit of Ben Ur Moor and the sun almost came out a wee minute ago. <laughs> There's an old trick point there which has been obviously shattered by lightning or the elements or something. And anyway, it's not too bad. It's uh, still claggy at the moment but I'm actually holding out a wee bit of hope. I might go back, I don't know if you can see me. <laughs> I've set the camera looking down the hill, there you go, I think you can see me now. So yeah, it's um, it's not actually too windy up here, it was forecast to be 20-30 mile an hour winds but at the moment there's a wee lull, which is quite nice and I can sense that the sun's maybe going to come out. Maybe by the time I get around to the third hill it will, but uh, now I need to get to the first Corbett. As I said, this isn't a Corbett, there's not as m there's not enough of a drop between Ben Ur Moor and Ben Ur Veg, which is the next one. So I need to drop down, I think it drops down maybe 100 metres or so, it's about a couple of kilometres on along this ridge. 
and as has been since I came into the Clag, it's been a navigational day today because as I said, can't see really, can't really see much and the map and compass has been out and the view ranger and what have you, keeping me right. But fingers crossed that we get to get a view. Right, on to the first core, but let's go. Lovely. So on I went and there was lots of little lock-ins on this rough ridge that dropped down and you could sense that you could sense there was sort of brightness happening and as I dropped down towards the call it opened up and I got a view at last. It was lovely. Wow, look at that! Haha, I've got a view! Oh, what a view that is! You'll not be able to see what I can see away down there. There's a, a gully going right down into the loch. And you see this peak here, I don't know if that's the summit or not. That could well be Benu or Beg. That might be the first corbett there. I think it probably is. It's either that or it's a bit further on, but this view is spectacular. Wasn't expecting that. I might be in, in luck here. If this cloud base lifts, then uh, I might get some views, but this will do with us now. Absolutely fantastic. I'm actually going to take the camera out, get some pictures here, because that is a fine view. Right, let's get this camera out. So I took a few photographs because I really didn't know or think <clears throat> when the next view would appear. It was pretty claggy and as I started to ascend up the first Corbett, yeah, I was soon back in the clag and yeah, it wasn't looking too promising. And it was a bit of a shame really because I could get a real sense of exposure at this point. The cliffs and the steep sided slopes dropping down towards Loch Shiel. I was thinking this would have been a, a fantastic hiking, good weather. If only I could get the views from the summit that I believed I hadn't seen before. But you know what, even when it's cloudy you kind of, you're kept going because you think oh, that's another, another Corbett in the bag. Anyway, I was soon rising above the loch and heading towards the summit and something strange happened. The clouds started to clear. It was magical. <laughs> well I've made the summit. This is the first Corbett. Ben, we are vague. And I've I couldn't have timed it any better. It's just cleared. I can see where I've come from over there. Oh, you can see right down. Hopefully you can hear this. It's blowy up here. You can see right down the loch to Glen Finn. Down there in the darkness, but if we spin round this way, <coughs> you see where the sunshine's coming. Looks like the weather's coming. You can just see all this cloud over here blowing. Blowing through now. This is where I'm headed to, headed over here. And hopefully that cloud's just gonna Yeah, gonna clear and allow me to head over here. It's absolutely can't believe my luck. Usually I'm cursing my luck. But this is great, look at that. Scotland at its best. Fantastic. Whoa, it's about five o'clock now. It's about five o'clock now, sorry, it's really windy. And uh, I still reckon I've got another five hours until it gets dark, but this area is, I've been up, I've not been up these hills before, but I've been up quite a few of the surrounding hills. And there's another reason why uh, I came up here, and that's uh, this kind of area. It's got a special importance to me, and I might come on to that in the next video. And yeah, I'll, uh, I'll be talking about that later. But this is just lovely. Absolutely stunning. Right, I'm going to get the camera out and see if I can take some pictures. Oh, if my eyes stop watering. <laughs> I pulled myself off the summit. With the cloud clearing, the views were starting to open up and the cloud was dropping below me, sort of showing me the way forward and the, the next mountain was peeking its head above the cloud. It really was fantastic and it was nice to see some blue skies as well. It just worked out perfectly. That was absolutely stunning. I got really, really lucky there. Literally. I must have been 10 metres from the summit. 
and the cloud, there was a big gust of wind, the wind picked up and the cloud just cleared. Doesn't often happen to me, so my slow pace and my, my plan has actually worked. If you look around now, this is the hill I'm going to now over my, uh, over my shoulder. It's clear, I can see the route. I do have to drop to below 500 metres and then all the way back up to nearly 900, but that's the Corbett's for you. And it's just absolutely stunning. Look at the scenery now. From seeing nothing to being bathed in sunshine. Absolutely lovely. <laughs> so, need to shut up, drop down to the Bulak. I might stop at the Bulak and get a bite to eat, give me some energy. And then I pull up here and then a long walk back to the van. But when I get to the van, that's me. So, super. Let's get cracked on. Well, I'm at the Bulak. And behind me, I don't know if you'll see it over my shoulder. <laughs> it's the second Corbett, third hill, and I've dropped down to under 500 metres, so this is going to be a bit of a pool. But I'm just taking my time actually, and it's, it's lovely now that I've got views, I'm looking back this way over the uh, the hills of this being up and over, and there's blue skies behind them, what have you, but I'm pretty sure at some point there's going to be some rain showers rattling in, because that cold front's moved away, and that's usually what happens. You get some showers moving in, but I'm just enjoying this, uh, the, the views, the, la <laughs> the lack of rain, and just, well, you're making excuses before I have to head up this steep part of the hillside behind me. Ah, uh, it looks steep. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. Anyway. Right, five more minutes and I'll get going. A few more jelly babies. I was quite tired at this point and I'd, I'd chosen these two hills as they were the longest sort of routes that I had planned over the next week and today was to be the nicest weather. And I thought I'll get these bagged first. And that, this pull up the second Corbett was, was quite steep and I was glad to have bagged two new Corbetts. <clears throat> anyway, I was soon approaching the summit of Corbett number two and what a fine sight it was as well. Woo. Amazing view, there we go. This is me at the summit of the second Corbett. Ben McKea. And it's just lovely, this, this is a bit more of a pronounced summit. The last one was great as well. Ben, uh, Ben over Veg, the, the views down Glock Shield were great, but this is fantastic. I can see over to the Ross Venn circuit, there's three Corbett's there. And that really is a spectacular round as well, demanding, but you're right on the coast with those three. It's absolutely beautiful. And to the north of me, I can see into Noidart, Skunakish, and this area here, Sunart and Noidart, actually feels very similar to Noidart, but less well known. And that's probably because there's no Monroe's here. I kind of like that. Uh, it means there's less traffic. I mean, there's hardly been any paths on this round at all. Uh, navigation, I mean, it makes, means you have to know your navigation. It's not just a head down and follow the path job. But fantastic, it's a bit bloaty. <clears throat> so I'm gonna take a few photographs and then start heading down to the van. I'm looking forward to that cup of tea already. So camera out, take a few snaps. Back to the van, right. So I took a few photographs and I was soon heading back down. And I was quite tired. I'd done about 1300 metres of ascent and there was still a long way to get back to the van. I've made good progress off the hill. I'm almost at an ATV track, I can see it going down there. And I follow that down, I think it's going to be really boggy down there. And I need to try and cross the uh, the river beside the road. And then it's my favourite type of walking, about a kilometre walk along the road. I hate that. <laughs> I hate it, and then I'm back to Disco Daisy. So, I think the heavens are about to open. I think that cold front and the showers that I talked about are just about to reach me. So, I better get my head on. Head on? I'm tired. Head down and get cracked on because I've still got a couple of hours till I'm back in the car. Oh, oh man, right, let's go. It wasn't long before some of those rain showers reached me and it, they were pretty squally events and yeah, it made me wet and damp and miserable and that last hike up the road was, yeah, wasn't very nice. But at least I'd got two new Corbett's in the bag. Ah, oh, there's Disco Daisy, woohoo! A welcome sight indeed. If only I could have pressed a button on my phone and got her to make me a cup of tea. For me arriving, that would have been grand, but 
First thing, kettle on, cup of tea, put my feet up. Woohoo! Fantastic. Oh, that's me. Uh, found a wee spot to chill for the night in the van with some lovely sea views. Look at this. Ah, wait there, look at that. I don't know what that is over there. I don't know if I can zoom in. There's an island, I think. I'm not sure which island it is, but <laughs> I'll take a look back. Then behind me, I can see uh, the Corbett's or the Roseven circuit. Anyway, so I'm going to get set up in the back now, get some tea on. And just chill here for the night. The forecast for tomorrow is shockingly bad, so it will not be a big hill day tomorrow. I'm thinking of going up uh, Recipo, um, maybe camping at the campsite there, get some electricity and what have you in a shower. What a lovely spot to have some tea and spend the night. Had lovely sea views and the sound of the waves lapping against the shore put me to sleep nicely. And had a lovely spot to spend the night as well. It really was gorgeous. And I was all set for my day tomorrow. The video you've just seen of the uh, the two Corbett's which I slogged up and got some great views from the top of and I was really quite glad, I thought there's another two Corbett's in the bag, it was a hard one day, quite a lot of ascent, it was nearly 1400 metres of ascent. Anyway, jump forward, this video, this part of the video, or what I'm videoing now should I say, is actually tomorrow. <laughs> so this is after I've done tomorrow's hill. I was uh, I was looking through my Corbett's book. Here we are to see what Corbett I'm going to do tomorrow, which is two days for you. <laughs> but anyway, don't want to get confused and confuse myself here. And I've just realised that those two mountains that I've just done in the video that you've just watched, I've actually done them before. <laughs> oh, I can believe it! I was looking through here, and they're ticked off. I did them apparently uh, in March 2014. It was an easterly wind. Sunny but very hazy, some soft snow not frozen, took five and a half hours. I was obviously a bit fitter <laughs> than I was back then than I am now because it took me a, ooh, probably about a good hour longer than that, maybe a bit more. Sore calves after a midweek workout is what I've written. I have no recollection. None. Zero. I cannot remember to, doing these hills. Albeit when I was at the summit of the first Corbett, I, I do remember the view down uh, Loch Shield towards Glenfinnan, but I kind of thought that was a memory that I'd had from the Munro, which is on the other side of the loch, which is a kind of similar view down. I just, I can't believe that I did that round. Uh, I, at no point on it, even the, the, the crossing of the railway at the start, which is quite distinct with the tunnel and what have you, I can't, I can't remember it, which is really odd because I, I often think I think in the sea hills, and I can usually remember the days I was on the hills, I can look at them, if I'm up one hill and I'm looking over to another hill, I think, oh, I remember the day I was on that, I remember what it was like, I remember the weather, I remember who I was with. But these two, nothing. I, I, I honestly can't remember doing them. And it, you know what, I can't really complain, because the views that I got at the top when it cleared was fantastic. But it's just annoying, because I was really hoping, I, I'd got into this bagging mood. I thought I'm going to bag some Monroes, eh, Monroes, some Corbett's and those two were the, hard, <laughs> the hardest day of what I had planned. I just wish I'd looked at my blooming book first. Hey ho, I don't know if any of you guys have done that before but that's a first for me. Um, really surprised at that. I'm just wondering whether I went up, there's a, there's a different route to start here. I wonder if I went up a different way. Um, I must go back and see if I can find the 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 photos and what have you, I've got them from that trip. Anyway, that's a, <laughs> a different way to end this video. Let me know below in the comments if you've done a similar thing or if it's just me and maybe getting old, if it was old age or what have you, who knows, but uh, uh, anyway, tune in next time and you'll see what I've done today. Uh, a rather, um, yeah, meant, meant to be an easier hike, but uh, anyway, 
I need to tune in on the next video to find out what that was. Right, from Disco Daisy and the camper van, time for me to go to sleep. Stay safe out there and uh, thanks for watching.